we know that patient is uh, you can say elderly female with poorly controlled diabetes with a long standing history of uh, gallstone with multiple attacks but why is diabetes so important here so do you know that diabetes is known to mask the pain receptors so let us take this as the biliary anatomy so we have the uh, the hepatic uh, you can say supply coming into the ball bladder as a cystic artery and now this is the cb this is the cbd so this is the cystic duct this is the gall bladder and let us draw this these are the you can say mucosal folds now do you know around this you have duodenum and even the colonic uh, the, the the hepatic flexure of colon is also there so whenever there is intense inflammation there is a tendency of fibrinous exudate to form the adhesions with the nearby bowel and that is why if you do a patient of chronic cholecystitis you always will find both adhesion and this is very common phenomenon in male you can always go to my surgery video sections and i have loaded so many of videos of you can say dense adhesion where we have to do extensive adhesiolysis but now the challenge is whenever this inflammation is actually chronic there is dense adhesion meanwhile the stones inside the gall bladder they are creating a problem what are they so they are just rubbing towards the you can say mucosal surface and they are destroying this mucosal surface and eventually what happens they erode into the you can say wall of the gall bladder and ultimately they might also erode into this duodenum or maybe the nearby bowel and first of all erosion into the bowel will result in formation of a fistula and via this fistula this stone will slip and will go into the distal tract where it will get what obstructed so do you know what is this this is classically known as cole cysto cole cysto entric fistula this is what is very 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 important lot of you believe that a slipped duct stone so a duct has was having a stone which slipped into the bowel into the bowel and it, it, it is causing obstruction remember someone which is able to cross the cbd and ampulla will never get obstructed at anywhere it is the large stones and via this cholecysto entric fistula this could be with the hepatic flexure of the colon with the transverse colon or with the duodenum however it is very 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 frequently seen with the duodenum and that is why cholecysto duodenal fistula is the most common type of fistulous connections let us understand there is cholecysto entric fistula and because of which the gall stone enters into the intestine and it is towards the terminal ileum where the blockage will happen do you know when the bile and the gall stone are entering similarly the air from the bowel will enter into the gall bladder and from there into the cystic duct and from there into the biliary tree and this is what is known as classically known as pneumobilia this is what is very important so we get to see pneumobilia this is one thing second is do you know this is an ectopic location for the gall stone so ectopic gall stone and do you know this ectopic gall stone will result in intestinal obstruction because it will not find its way out and that is why the obstruction will happen do you know that this is classical triad which is known as a regular triad so triad of pneumobilia intestinal obstruction and ectopic gall stone this is what is known as a regular triad we have lot of regulars in our surgery we have regular notch which is a notch in the adenosy of the lung we have the regular index which is the index for left ventricular hypertrophy we have a regular sign what is regular sign double bowel sign what is this double bowel wall sign this is no double wall actually in cases of intestinal perforation the air leaks and you know air is the best contrast opacifying media so air on the inner side air on the outer side that gives you a double bowel appearance that is what is a regular sign this is a regular stri- right now standard one very important thing if the stone goes down it causes intestinal obstruction god forbid if the stone moves up what will happen suppose if the stone would have gone up so upward migration would have caused a gastric outlet obstruction and what is this known as you can comment in the comment section this is what is known as bouvre syndrome so remember gall stone and what kind of gall stone ectopic gall stone and along with that this is associated with gastric outlet obstruction this is what is known as bouvre syndrome bouvre syndrome and this is what is again very important now when you are talking about the approach or the management now this is let us talk about the treatment for 
gallstone ileus now this is what is very 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 important first of all investigation of choice whenever there is acute obstruction we will have to go for x-ray on x-ray you can see a signet ring appearance why signet ring appearance because this stone might be radio opaque that is okay it might not be but the air around so this is what is very 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 important so the air around this will be acting as an opacifying media and this will give you that typical signet ring appearance so signet ring appearance signet ring appearance is the classical you can say appearance that you get to see on the x-rays in case of acute obstruction this is acute obstruction if it is sub acute intestinal obstruction then you can also go for cct with oral contrast however students this is less likely this finding because majority of the time a patient presenting with acute obstruction only then only we think of gallstone ileus that is what is very 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 important now when we talk about the management this is what is very 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 important and i'll show you the ct plate also for one of our patient so whenever we talk about management urgent laparotomy this is what is very important so urgent laparotomy and when you do for laparotomy then the next step is localization of obstruction so localization once you localize the obstruction how do you localize the obstruction there will be a zone of transition between the dilated and the non dilated segment so dilated segment means a segment proximal to the dilatation non dilated segment means segment you can say distal to the obstruction and then you can do entrotomy so you the next step is to do entrotomy and this is done 5 to 6 cm proximal to the obstruction so why this is done on the proximal segment why this is what is very important a stone might be eroding the wall and might have caused it a lot of traumatic damage if you open it and you try to close it there's a high risk risk of leakage and hence a fistula and this is what is very important so you will do entrotomy proximal to the site of obstruction the next thing is you are going to do a manual milking followed by this milking out of stone so milking out of stone is very 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 important so your attempts will milk the stone out and this is what is very 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 important so milking out of stone and 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 this is how you repair so along with that repair or closure repair or closure of entrotomy when you talk about the patients the patient attendant will also say sir please do a cholecystectomy also someone who was not alert not conscious for 10 years 20 years now he wants to wants you to do a cholecystectomy for cholecystoenteric fistula tell him that it will not be done remember cholecystectomy is not to be done in the such scenarios because healing will never happen because this is a case of a case of acute intestinal obstruction inflammatory stress is quite high in this case this is not only gallbladder it is the dismantling of the fistula and closure of the fistula and majority of the time the diurnal rent will blow out so either you if you are doing then you will have to do a pyloric exclusion and lot of things we don't do this at this time this is what is very important so cholecystectomy is done four to six weeks later this is four to six weeks later this is what is very important what is how do you do a cholecysto diurnal repair now this is what is very important because with excision of with excision and repair of the fistula do you know if it is colon then that is not a problem but if it is a case of uh, you can say diurnal fistula so you know the diurnum is going to have a very high risk of the blowout so if it is a small non-infected non-inflamed you might attempt a closure it is okay but many people also perform a pyloric exclusion what is this pyloric exclusion so this is the pylorus you take out the you just uh, take a forcep and you invert the pylorus and you go for a pyloric closure once you do a pyloric closure now nothing is going to enter into the diurnal segment and this is also what we do for all the diurnal fistula we want a surgical repair so you have done a repair but we don't want to put any load and stimulation on that and then what is the next step you can always attempt to go for a what the gastro jejunostomy so there are a lot of options that is repair repair of you can say diurnum or diurnal rent along with that with pyloric exclusion and along with that you can also go for gastro jejunostomy so this was the complete management of the gallstone ileus and which is what